Hey guys, um, so, I'm Candace, this is Mike again, my husband Mike. How you doing? We wanted to do another video on um, the male versus female perspective on just different topics. Uh, we decided last minute to kind of do one work quick. We're a little late because there's been a lot of stuff going on lately. Um, so, here we are. Um, for those of you who watch my other videos, I will be putting some out. I'm sorry that, um, I've been a little off, but, um, you know, I have my stuff that I'm going through too, so I should be starting to put those out again. Um, but anyways, we'll stick to this. We want, we want to ideally put at least one of these out a week. Um, so if any of you guys do have any ideas of things you want us to talk about or look into or whatever, let us know. If not, we're going to go off common things we think of ourselves or just things that come up that's a good debate between us. And a lot of times we'll be like, we should put this in a video. Um, so, I don't know. I don't feel like talking a lot for this, so we're just going to get started. Um, so, I guess I'll start out asking, um, what would you say that guys want in a woman? Well, there are two answers to that. There's what a guy will tell you, and then what a guy even subconsciously looks for. Uh, and even more so, that changes as they get older, older too. Like for me, when I was early 20s or so, it was just straight up what a chick put out. That's what I looked for in a woman. I didn't care about personality or any of that. Just what you put out. No. Like have sex. Yeah. Would you have sure sex with me at the time? And it, back then for me, I actually chose women that were completely unavailable for relationships. They were already in relationships. Made that easy for me. So my non-committal self didn't need, didn't, made sure that wasn't even on the table. But, was that from the start, though, or was that... Honestly, it was pretty close to it. I went through phases here and there. Uh, when I first got out of the Army, I played around a little bit. Then uh, I got into a more long-term relationship that didn't really work out that great for me uh, or her. We just, we just weren't good together, and it went on way too long. And after that, I just went buck wild, uh, and it was all about, uh, could I sleep with a woman? That, that, that was pretty much it. No, I didn't care personality, any of that. There was no passive physical attraction. There was no attraction. So why did you pick people who were already in relationships? Because I could tell them to go back to their relationship if things got too serious with me. It, it was purely... Did you ever I, think about, like, what it, What if you met somebody that you really liked? Or I guess it doesn't matter if they're in a relationship, but maybe it does. Honestly, I don't know if I would have recognized somebody I really liked at the time. And if it was somebody I really liked at the time, due to my own issues, uh, there's a really good chance if I overly liked you at the time, it would have been an abusive relationship. If you liked them? Yeah, as there's chances are, uh, everybody has their their ticks that make you an abuser or an abusee, most of the time in the same relationship. So it would have been an abusive relationship only if you liked the person? Not only if I liked them, but chances Why? are... Why, because you would have wanted to let them go? So you would have had to manipulate or something? or Or, or been manipulated... Things like that. Not necessarily me being an abuser. Me putting myself into a position to be abused. Type deal. I'd like to say this too. Not that this really matters. Because I don't know if a lot of people you know, follow like tarot and astrology. Most from my channel will. Another thing I think that's important is... A lot of who he is... You know, it, per Western astrology, he's an Aquarius sun, a Leo moon, and a Pisces rising... Uh, his Venus is also in Capricorn. Um, meaning, those are a lot of the signs. 
especially like I know a lot of male water signs and Leos and Aquariuses are very much, they're very seen as uh, being cold, detached, not, you know, having no emotion. They're just kind of seen as one of the more like, I don't know, cold and manipulative signs or whatever. I think Scorpio is one of them too. Taurus, somewhat of Gemini, Capricorn can be or whatever. But I, I hear a lot mostly about like Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, Aquarius, Leo, mostly a lot of your fixed sign stuff. But I just want to say this too, because some people, I read a lot of stuff about Aquariuses, so it might be interesting to learn about an Aquarius mind. I don't know. Um, but... Charlotte, you're in my way. <laughs> in my way. Um, did I ask you what do guys want in a woman? Oh, uh, we we hadn't. We I. What did I ask you? Fin- you asked me what do guys want in a woman, and I hadn't finished okay. the explanation. Uh, I had gotten off on a tangent uh, <laughs> about how even so if. So what I do guys want in a woman? So there are two things that people that guy there are two answers to that. Hopefully people are still hanging on. Yeah, hopefully. Jesus. The the one one answer is the one that people want to think is what they want or want you to think that's what they want, which is uh, the life partner, a great personality, all that. But especially when a, a man is younger, all he's really looking for is an attractive woman. They don't really get into, and I'm speaking from personal experience, this was me when I was younger. You don't really get into all that stuff about uh, personality pluses or negatives. Uh, A lot of guys think they met the girl of their dreams that's just a pretty girl and then run into all kinds of relationship problems because they didn't actually check to see, do we have compatible personalities? And at the time, that's not even what they're looking for. That comes up later in life. So like, you can't like have that saying, like you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. And, and you'll notice uh, if you start really looking at like divorce, when couples divorce and all that, it's right around in the 30s where people do start caring more about people's personalities and whatnot. And that stuff can kind of clash. Okay. So, say say a guy's a little bit more... Okay, so we've pretty much wrapped up when most of them are younger. They just want... Uh, sex. Sex and... Really most of it. <laughs> sex and a hot body yeah. uh, trophy, basically. Um, okay. So, when they start maturing a little bit, what do they want? When guys start maturing a little bit, they start looking more for somebody they can be friends with. Uh, that was one of the biggest changes where I wanted to start getting to know a woman more than just for her physicality. I wanted to know, okay, are you somebody that I would be okay waking up next to for the next foreseeable future? And if that was not a yes, a strong yes, then it was a no. Well, there's obviously a difference between somebody that you're friends with and somebody that is relationship or wife material. Very true. So, but that basis of friendship, it, it, to me, is extremely important. If you're not at least friends first, then uh, what are you going to do when that, what is it? All right, so you got the day. friendship down, though. What do you want in a woman? Mostly it's uh, personality traits now. I mean, I want her to have always been a woman but <laughs> that's personal preference doesn't have to be yours it's mine <laughs> but um, I mean I, I want her to I want an intelligent woman I want one that's not just going to be a yes ma'am type thing yes man type deal yes, ma'am. you know what I'm saying <laughs> I don't I don't want I a do. damn mini me and I and I told you that when we first got together. I don't want a mini me. If you agree with everything I say, then what the hell do I need you for? Because to me, a woman, to be worthwhile in my life, you have to bring more than just your sexuality to the table. 
at this point in my life. And basically being a friend is really that, that part that really bridges a gap after, uh, after you get past uh, physicality or sexuality that makes you want to be around somebody. Because if the only time you want to be around somebody is when you're having sex with them, newsflash, that's not really a relationship. That's yeah. just... So they have to be smart and they have to disagree with you all the time. Not all the time. I know. <laughs> I can count it. No, I prefer what else? Not like, all the time. Um, um, I mean, I do want her to be attractive, too. That, that is one of the things I want from a woman is... Uh, I don't necessarily need you to be a trophy, but I need you to be a woman. Soft, supple, all that good stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 all right, is that it? Anything else that you want in a woman? You want them to be smart. You want them to be decently yeah. attractive. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't mess with dumb chicks. Always a woman. Yeah, all, all that's um, personal preference, but it be is your my best friend. Preference. Yeah, you don't even have to be a best friend; just a good friend. That that's makes it even a little bit easier. Yeah. I'm sure it's more than that, but yeah, that, that's the start though for it. So I guess we'll go into what do women want in a man. I and of course, this is very, like, it's very, I guess, subjective would be the word, depending on the woman and their age and stuff like that. Um, most women, especially when they're younger, like, they're not as, you know, healed or noticing a lot of their wants or desires or wounds or anything like that. So, um, I think a lot of women, you know, think that they want, like that really loving relationship um women i i don't know I, i'm gonna speak for me not all women are gonna be like me but um i did want somebody to be my best friend i do well when i was younger i did and obviously good sex um especially the sex and um, I wanted somebody, I guess, that I could be myself around, I can trust and all that. I will say, though, that due to me not seeing things properly uh, and going more off, like, my wounds or daddy issues or whatever, um, I didn't go... I didn't go towards the people that would give me what I say I want. And I do think that's a common issue with women where they will say they want one thing and go after somebody else or a different. That's why, you know, I think that's where the thing comes from where, you know, they say got, you know, they, no one really wants a nice guy or nice guys finish last or whatever it is. Um, and they say they want the bad guys. And in my opinion, it's not that women want the bad guys. What I think women really want is somebody who is a mixture. Like, I, I'm all about balance. I like balance. I want a mixture of somebody who is enough of, you know, hard and manly, masculine. I really like masculine. Um, you'll, you know, I prefer them always to have been a male. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what? I'm open to say. I don't know. But, no, I'd rather them always be a male. But, either way, I'd like the masculine um, type. But... Um, I don't know. I guess I, because I always went towards other people I couldn't really trust. Um, I couldn't really trust in that. Um, and a lot of times when people came across as masculine, it was more of a male bravado type of thing. Um, so I've really had to figure out a lot of things as getting older of what being masculine really looks like and what really being a man really is like, what love is really like. Uh, I had to break out of the illusion of things and the facade and the illusion. But um, ideally, I would like a man who can get, like, the manly things done around the house. 
I know this is going to like roll things, but I'd like to, you know, if they don't want to do the yard, like make sure it gets done. Even if you have to like, if we have the money, like pay somebody to do it. I would like somebody to handle a certain amount of decisions and go ahead, like basically to take action, that masculine taking action type thing. Um, I'd like them to be honest and be able to communicate at least decent enough. Um, but really, I think, because, you know, you're not going to get all, all the things. Obviously, I'd like them to make a decent amount of money. I'd like them, really something I find that's very important to me is I really want a man who's like a go-getter. Like, as I'm finding and coming more into my path and I'm just getting, like, hungrier and hungrier for, like, growing and figuring things out about myself, that's coming that I'm learning is very important to me. I really do want that in, in a guy or a mate. Um, and I guess you would call that typically, like, being on their spiritual path, whether you're spiritual or not. You're just tapping into yourself and finding out who you are and what you want and, and, and growing and improving. Um, willing to have an open mind enough to learn. I want them to be secure in who they are. Like, I want a man to be strong enough to be able to stand there in their truth and who they are, no matter what I say, no matter what, because I'm, I'm a strong personality, too. So I need somebody who is very secure in who they are um, enough to be there, present, and not fall back. I don't want to be able to push them down. Not that I will try, but you get what I'm saying. I don't want to be able to push them down. But I want them to be able to stand there and not come at me. And I also want somebody to not try to push me down because I'm standing tall, too. I want them to be able to stand just like this and realize the king and queen for it, what it is and to know the value and they both hold a value. Yes, each should be okay and strong on their own, but to see the value in that union and standing side by side and knowing when, okay, you know, she can have this one or maybe she's a little right on this one or knowing like even if I really believe something, you know, him standing his truth on it and me being like, oh, that's true or, well, that's his thought and I can't do anything about it. Like, I want someone to have a backbone but not be full of pride and ego to where they can't admit if they are wrong or admit if something, you know, needs to grow or can be done better or have to do it on their own or not be able to work as a team, basically. I mean, I don't want it codependent where we have to do everything together, but I want to be able to do things together if we need to. Yeah. Um, be, I want to be able, trust to me is a huge thing. I don't want to have to fear things with you. I don't want to have to distrust you. Um, I don't want to have to worry about where you are, what you're doing, who you're talking to. If I have to check your phone, I'm not going to be with you. Um, if something looks weird or I'm like getting, you know, mm, I don't know. I mean, there's energies like that sometimes that go around, but I feel like if you get to the point where you can't trust the person you're with, or you feel like you have to check their phone or yeah, there's, you know, this and this and this and this, like, I don't, I'm not saying like, sometimes that can be worked through. So I'm not saying people shouldn't be in that. And I don't know, but for the most part, like I, I want trust. Like I want I don't know, just even pay it back based on past experiences, like, I don't know, I have, like, PTSD on certain things of, like, <laughs> like, people not being there or being able to trust them or just, I don't know. So, I, I want to be able to have some type of strong foundation. And so, just like I bring a strong foundation, I want that man to bring a strong foundation. I would like them to be funny. Uh, they would have to be intelligent. I will say that. Um... Because I am especially a strong personality, like, if I, in, in the way my personality is, if I don't understand something or something doesn't make sense to me, like, I'll be like, I've got to, like, figure it out or whatever. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, if somebody, I don't know, if they were slow and had a really big heart, <laughs> or something, I, I don't think so. I still don't think it would work. I, I don't know, but... I'd like them to have a, a decent amount of intelligence, gusto, like a good mind on their... I, I'd like to feel as secure with them as I hope I would make somebody feel secure that they have my back. Um, and good sex. Did I say that? Yeah. Good sex. Um, 
Did we cover uh, anything? Is there anything you think I'm missing that we've talked about or whatever? Well, on this topic, you said... It's a, it's a bonus, too, if they cook for you. <laughs> That's great. Uh, on this topic, she said a whole lot. And a lot of women uh, repeat those pretty close to the same words. But from my experience and from a lot of other guys' experiences, very few women are actually looking for that. That's not what... Well, what women look for and what they end up finding are very different things. Uh, my experience as a young man, uh, if you came across as somewhat mysterious or even edgy or almost dangerous, it's like that. Well, if you did or the woman did? If I did. The woman would cut you off? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'd want you. That quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, especially if you weren't the nicest guy. You didn't have to be a straight-up ass to them. But if you weren't the greatest person to them, it was that quick. It's also about balance. I know. Like, and nobody wants somebody to always be nice or always give them what, what you want. And then I feel like a lot of guys took off with that and and they were able to manipulate with that. Mm -hmm. and, to, and then took it too far, which is also our fault because the women really then fell into the manipulation and the, yeah, I don't um, know. But I mean, Fortunately, there are a couple of mo international movements that actually created a very easy space for pickup artists. And that's that's completely what it is. I didn't know that's what I was doing at the time, but it is what it is. Uh, but that, that that too, that's one of those things that it also evolves as the woman gets older, or hopefully it evolves as the woman gets older and she discovers more about herself and the things that she won't accept, which is kind of where you're at now. Yeah. Like little things too, like, like nicknames. I know a lot of people comment on that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, where people are like, I don't like when people call me like baby or sugar or this or this. Sugar dog and we were talking dog. about that and that was a good thought, you know, so I'll, I'll ask you like, why do guys, why do you think a lot of guys, when and why will guys use nicknames? Generally, uh, if, if, uh, if there's too many women in that guy's life, he's not gonna he's not gonna risk using your actual name because he might use the wrong name. Is it also manipulative to like sweet talk you too, though? Oh yeah, absolutely. It, it, it serves several purposes, and once again, speaking from experience, uh, hell, there was a chick uh, for the first at least like month. I wasn't even using her name. It was a different name. It was close to her name. But, and I wasn't even messing with any other chicks at the time. It was literally, I didn't know her name, her actual name for the first month. Well, I mean, to give credit to you, she didn't correct you. Yeah, she never corrected me. So... She, she had her own issues. If she was willing to accept being called the wrong name for a month, she had her own issues. But, yeah. So you can call me whatever you want to call me. Just keep doing it. <laughs> um, exactly. But, I mean, what, why else? I mean, I would assume you guys, after a while, might do it out of adoration, too. Like it baby. depends on what phase you're in. It, it really depends on what phase you're in. And there, so there's... I said eventually. Yeah, there, there's a difference... There's a difference in the way it's said. There, there's. I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to express it correctly. You don't have to. It's it's just the phases. Some part they can't remember all the names. It also can be used as manipulative. I'm sure eventually, at some point though, if you really do love somebody, eventually you can literally like. It's it's just what you call the person. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why a lot of girls you know, don't really like it too is because they, they feel exactly that. They feel like they're not necessarily like, oh, he doesn't, maybe some people are like, he doesn't remember my name, but, um, I think most women are like, it just feels gross to them and the pit of their stomach sometimes, especially if it's too soon, because 
it gives you that kind of like sales car, car salesman player vibe where it's like you're they it almost sounds like they're trying to pull one over on you or something i don't know some people might get really sucked into it i don't really know but um yeah so I think both men and women, though, kind of go about what getting what they want out of the other sex, especially when they're younger in, the, in yeah. not the correct way. I do think guys are a little bit more direct about it, and I know a lot of women would disagree with me on that. They'd be like, no, I told him what I wanted. Yeah, but um, not really. Like, w women, for the most part, especially when they, you're younger or you're just not willing to look at yourself and your patterns, if you were to write down the qualities you want in a man... And you will write down the qualities of the man you're going after. There's a lot of women that it doesn't line up. Right. It, it, it doesn't where the guys, they actually, it, it is, but it isn't like they actually are getting what they want. And some of them, it's easy to get what they want that way. And then some have to manipulate to do it. So a, theirs doesn't fully line good, up either. A good analogy. Uh, the, the, the ladies that end up with uh, a player or pickup artist or whatever, the easiest way to put it is you're going to a hot dog vendor on the side of the street looking for a, a perfect steak. You're, you're, you're going to get what all that's available. It's kind of like the saying I heard recently where it's like you find that guy who's always almost. You know, like they're, they're always almost whatever you want them to be. They never progress past that. Um, so... just as a tip thing in case anybody's following this type of thing is really look at the type of man you're going after. What do you really want? Write it on paper. And if you're interested in somebody and they're always almost something, but not quite your dating potential or what you want them to be trying to put like a circle into a, a square or something. And they have all these other characteristics that don't match that, but you think they could or whatever, or you've invested so much time, or I don't even know, then you're not going after what you want. You don't know what you want. Um, but either way, I think that's what most men, women want in a man. Some may want just money. They may want to go shopping. They may want to be taken out to dinner. Um, I don't know. I don't really fully care about that. I'm the type that, for the most part, I can provide all those things for myself. Um, I I just want someone to be like a companion with, to be my, you know, my best friend, to challenge me sometimes. I want to grow. Like, I don't want it to be constantly challenging, but I want it to be enough where it's a nice balance between a, a, a unity, a togetherness, a being on the same page, but also enough of a challenge to where you can either help me expand my mind or you can mirror enough to show me something about myself to grow and to do it in a way. Honestly, what I found too is that um, you, you can use not so great relationships in that way, but it's a little bit harder to do it in the middle of it or when you're in it because when you really don't trust somebody or you feel like you have to protect or defend yourself, your walls are up. And when your walls are up, you don't say things properly, you're way in your wounds and being very protective. It wasn't until I really secluded myself and kind of protected myself, really actually until I got with you too, that I felt safe enough to really let my walls down enough to really look at myself and look at the world around me. So... Just a newsflash on that for those of you who are wanting to grow and you're constantly keeping yourself in predicaments that just aren't good for you, but you're not understanding why you're not growing. You need to either go in hermit mode and get away from that person or situation or just be around people that you can honestly trust. And sometimes that's hard to do when you don't know yourself yet. So sometimes you may just need to get away from it. But it wasn't really until then that I was able to really see myself in the world around me and feel safe enough to do yeah. it. Like that was one way that I've had two or three people in my life besides my parents that were great at my greatest teachers in this lifetime, you know, and Mike has definitely been one of them and his has been through the method of, of healing and, and trust and I guess getting back faith. You know, like being able to be in that situation where you, you feel safe enough to do it. Uh, something. Oh, like... and a protector. 
that's what a lot of women want also, which actually brings us to that other video about, yeah. but a productive and a good father, I guess, if you have kids. Something that I wanted to add into this. Good with money is good too. Yeah, this is for both men and women. You really, both, you need to start taking the time to make sure you're picking quality people. Is it's the only way that things are actually going yeah, to integrity. Improve. You had uh, Candace and I got lucky. Uh, it was literally I, I believe it was an accident even that we got together in the first place. Uh, we got extremely lucky. But that's not the norm. You're not gonna just stumble across a quality person. Generally, that requires you to actually get to know them before you make any real decisions. And then you decide based on, is this somebody you actually want to be around? Yeah. I mean, it was what it was. And like, we actually, we did get lucky. In some ways, we moved fast. And then in a lot of ways, we didn't. We did things a, a lot different. I know I had gotten to a point of dating where I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. just done. done. I, I don't... I didn't want to date anybody. I wanted to like focus on myself and focus on the things I could control. Um, I had certain things that I set on a list to do, especially when I moved here to Jacksonville and I had done all but one. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to focus on that and do that. Like, I just don't even want to date anybody or put my energy into that. And I guess Mike got yeah. to the same I was on the, the tail end place. of a bad relationship. And yeah, so was I, actually. Uh, I... I had done some playing around a after that relationship, uh, had my fun, all that kind of stuff, and I was just tired of it. I was tired of dealing with people in general, uh, let alone uh, messing with a woman and trying to get laid and all of that, so I, I was just done. Yeah, and so we actually met on a dating site. Yeah, uh, blackpeoplemeet.com. <sighs> It no, really, not it really. <laughs> it was. It was it actually was a different. One, it was actually man. plenty of fish, which is a really one, one of the most horrible ones. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to down plenty of fish, but for wanting a committed relationship, 90, it's not a good one. There, it's a hookup site, basically. Yeah, ninety percent of the women I met on Plenty of Fish were hookups. Yeah, and so, and I don't even know if he really messaged me or not. It, it, I think it was one of those assisted things. Through, I mean, it was either spirit or it was an assisted thing through through plenty of fish, and they were like, "Oh, so and so." Yeah, it was just a random. Likes you, or I don't know, one of those little things. And I was like, "I saw her picture popped up. She messaged. She messaged me first, I think." Well, I thought you did. And then I saw her picture pop up, and I just thought, "Oh, what the hell? I'll talk to her." Yeah, so I was. I was like, <laughs> ah. I was like, "Well, I'll just talk. I'll just be friends. But I'm not dating." And we literally did. We talked for like three months I think yeah. before we even and apparently I looked like a dog in my picture yeah, yeah a big blow up golf uh, golf club thing yeah. and short hair I have a beard back then I don't think so yeah so and his hair was like a carrot like, it was really <laughs> orange but anyways um so yeah I don't know I think it was really faded actually and I think that's why we got lucky that's why I tell people most of the time it's not gonna work but I will never say never because you know sometimes it happens and I really do feel it was faded I mean it's right when we both got to the point where we were like we're done, we're done. We're done. We both we both were like we're done and, and, and then I, it popped up as hey so and so would like to meet you and I thought he messaged me first and then he says I messaged him and we were both like, ah, screw it. You know, let's see what happens. And neither one of us pushed for anything. Yeah, like, it was I like... I don't think we met... We didn't meet even for the first three months. We were just talking on the phone. Yeah. Like, it was just... Yeah. So, anyways. Enough about our... <laughs> Sorted past. <laughs> our thing. But, um... What is your thought when I say guys are like, there's no good guys left? Uh, women are like, there's no good guys left. Yeah, like, or or, or can go both. Say a guy says there's no good women left. Most of these girls that say that though. Generally, but there are some guys now. It's growing. Hey, here are my thoughts on that. If if you're feeling like there's no good whatever left, like if there's no good guys, there's no good girls, whatever. 
It means they're avoiding you because you're not one of the good ones. That's my vibe on it. Simply because you attract what you what you get what you put out. I don't think just they're avoiding. I think women are looking for that. Like that's why I I put so much on my channel about perspective because it truly is about your perspective. Not only seeing what the guys are talking to are doing because not everything viewed as what a player does is actually horrible. A lot of people are actually in their wounds about it, but. You know, they're also subjecting themselves to it. If most of the time when they look back at it, they saw all the red flags. Oh, yeah. When, when, all of them. When Almost I was all of them. in relationships where they ignored them. I got cheated on, it, it was exactly like that. I have to admit to myself, when I look back over the course of the relationship, I see almost exactly how it happened. So but I, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I think, for one, it has to do with because people aren't integrated. They don't really actually know what they want. Most people don't even know who they are, yeah. let alone what they want. Um, but, and then they're not really going after what it is they really want. They, they're, they're, they're going after the ones that are always almost, they're going, they're trying mm -hmm. to make somebody into what they want. Well, on top of it, they don't even know what they want. Um, but so, something I'd like to add to this. And I just thought about this. It reminds me of that, uh, song by Shinedown. Sometimes goodbye is a second chance. The story on that, and this this is one of the ways you discover who you are. The story behind the video of the song is the young lady wants to go to ballet or something like that, and her parents are telling her, no, they're not going to pay for it. Well, sometimes goodbye is a second chance, and she jumps on a bus in the middle of the night and goes and chases after her dreams. Yeah. And that that's... Right, wrong, or indifferent, she's going to at least find out who she's not and be able to follow that trail. Yeah. To... But so many people, and that, that's where it goes in the relationship, like so many people are so fear-driven that they're really not willing to let go of it and be around themselves or be by themselves long enough to even find who they are or to even look into that perspective, to have that perspective shift. Um, and I know all about that. I, I was one of those, I still am, I'm still working through it, but most of it got switched during, you know, the first part of my awakening. But, um, so I get it. I have no judgment. I, I see where you could be totally locked into that and have no idea what you're yeah. doing. I mean, but when you really look at it and you see it and it all fits together, you're like, you saw it all along. I mean, that, that's on one out. of the types of awakenings that people have where you wake up not just to what's happening around you, but your own patterns yeah. that you're doing. It really comes at that time where it's just, it honestly, it just bothers you or hurts so much that it's actually more painful to stay in that illusion yeah. than it is to go to then to change out of it. That's usually when people make change is yeah. when the change is actually less painful than staying the way you are. So, um, but anyways, why, well, I think we'll do one last thing and then we'll call this a wrap. Why do you think that guys ghost and, you know, is this seen as a games thing that they do? Do guys even see a lot of the stuff they do as games of a perspective or is it just, it's just rational or there's mostly a, the ghosting part the focus on that? There's a couple of reasons why guys ghost. Uh, if it's early on, uh, it's because he wasn't that interested, in my opinion. It's because he really wasn't that interested, and he doesn't care if you drop off. Uh, you're not you're not a priority. Um, if it's more of a longer, and he got what he wanted. Yeah, or he didn't get what he wanted. That does bring up something else too. Uh, most of the time he got what he wanted. It's, when should you have sex with a dude? When should y'all be having sex? And honestly, at the end of the day, three to five dates, at least for me, that, that's mine, three to five dates. If you don't know somebody well enough after three to five dates on whether or not you're going to have sex with them, then... I mean, I don't really put a time on it. But I will say, to me, my answer depends on what you're looking for and what you want and how secure you are. Do you value your body? Are you okay with energy? Can you cleanse yourself of energies that are put inside of you? 
um, and what do you want out of it, it that's honestly can be a video all on its own. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really it's, put it's deeper a thing on that because that's circumstantial in my opinion. Um, but for the most part, unless unless you're sitting out there and a hit it and quit it, just like most guys are. Doesn't work out well for what most people want, especially if you want something committed. Sometimes it does, most of the time it doesn't. But go back to the ghosting thing. Uh, the ghosting deal, uh, if it's more of a long term relationship and it's showing a pattern, like you piss him off and then he drops off for a month, and then he comes back and you got that pattern. What that's what's that? What he's doing? He may not even realize it. But he's conditioning you to re to think, if I piss him off, he's going to go away. Or if you do whatever, he's going to go away. Yeah. Also, put, it, it also puts you in the chaser mode. Yeah. So it gives him a level of control. But th this is another thing. Uh, people tell you about themselves. This is part of another piece, too. People tell you about themselves. And ghosting or mixed signals and all of that. There's no such thing as a mixed signal. That is a signal that this might not be the type of person you want to be with. Yeah, I mean, I do believe sometimes people can go through things. But the difference is, if it's like like a minute or like one time or something like that, then, then okay, oh, yeah, like they're going through something. But if somebody always, if their consistency is inconsistency... That then is consistency. Yeah, then that's their consistency. <laughs> <laughs> that they are just inconsistent. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's about looking at their pattern on it, but I do think the biggest reasons why people get, you know, they ghost is they they got what they want. Um I know a lot of guys too have a misconception where they feel like um if they either ghost or they're mean to them, that they're actually helping the female out. They they feel like they're actually yeah. being more mean by doing by ending it or by talking to them or whatever. It's so hard. that that is yeah. hard for a guy because you guys go into tears. Uh, it's I, yeah. I've done this. Like it's they feel hard. like they're actually hurting them. And like that was the same thing. I talked on this a little in my last video where like when I was talking to him and the guys actually really thought when I was talking to this about it with guys that. They were actually taking the nicer approach for the female by being mean to them or by ghosting them so to make them idea. decide, yeah, so it's your idea to cheat. They thought they were actually being nicer and easier on them to where they were actually being less mean or an a-hole. There's also And we had to really, like, explain to them, no, you're actually, like, messing with their head and, I mean, I know it's their issue, too. The women have a responsibility on that, but that really messes with girls. And they're like, really? They're like, that's what that does? It, You know, that's actually being more mean. They're like, yeah, they don't know. If you give somebody a little bit, like, there's a lot of women, especially ones who have confidence issues, don't really know what they want. They have fear-based mentalities, all of that. Uh, they go into fixer mode. Yeah. They go into basically, like, if you give them an ounce, they... So it's, it's like in Dumb and Dumber. It's like, so you're telling me there's a chance, you know? Yeah, like one in a billion, but there's a chance. Um, like, and it does feed their ego and stuff too, but we've already covered that. But um, so is there any other reason that a guy would ghost? I do think, I think the biggest reason is actually manipulation or they got what they want. Or they didn't get what they want, but most of the time they... They got what they want. See, my, it, that depends, too, on the guy's situation. A lot of guys, once they get what they want, they'll keep coming around trying to get it again. Unless... Yeah, but that's the control factor. Unless you're asking for more than what they're able to give in, in a long, in a more of a long-term sense, then guy... I think it's also a shutting off of emotions, too. I could see it a guy is. doing that if if the emotions get a little bit too vulnerable for them. Yeah. I could see them completely backing off and shutting down. Oh, yeah. That that was one of the spots when I was younger and doing my thing. Uh, if a chick did get too attached to me, it ended right there. I don't even mean that. I mean, like, if the, emo if, if the vulnerability gets too much for the guy, even. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, if you I care feel too like... much, you got to cut that off. 
it, it, whether yeah, they yeah, plan yeah. to or not. Like some guys just get scared from that or whether they plan on it or not. And whatever rationalization they say, sometimes they'll put something wrong with the girl or they're like, they just need time or oh, they'll have to deal with it, you know, whatever. But I think there's a lot of reasons that, I mean, do you guys know though, like when you're ghosting, like, do you know that you feel or know you're doing something wrong? Or is it kind of like, I know it's wrong, but like, ha, like ego too, or like what? It depends. It really depends on when it's happening yeah. and yeah. what the motivations are behind it. Like I said, in a more long-term relationship, that absolutely is a manipulation tactic. And if it's shorter term, the guy might not be sure of how he feels. You might not be a priority or he might be scared of his emotions. And honestly, in most of those situations, he's doing you a favor. Yeah. And he probably got what he wanted or didn't get what he wanted too. And he just doesn't want to deal. There's also the chance. With talking to you or dealing with the. There's also. Whatever. It, it, another one, if it's early on, uh, it, why guys would just drop off. If all there is is a physical attraction and there's no emotional attraction, there's no personality attraction, nothing beyond physical, the guy will just drop off once that need has been met. Yeah. Women, tell me, tell, to, I'm sorry. Go oh, on. sorry. I was going to say women generally don't separate that. Yeah. Guys, guys, it's not, it is not mutually exclusive. We don't have to be emotionally attracted to you to see like, wow, you're hot or whatever and want to have sex with you. It's just the way it is. What were you asking? Tell me real quick, and then we really do have to go because it's going to cut out. Um, Tell me really quickly, there was something you were talking to me one time in the shock about about the point system with men. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Point systems. Guys have a point system, and women have a point system that we have interpreted. Guys see things like, uh, if we do a favor for you, that's worth so many points, like, almost like a sports type deal. So, I ran and picked you up from work. Uh, I've earned some points that I can cash in at a later time. Like, hey, I did this favor for you. To us, we're thinking that's worth a couple hundred points. What we see from you is it looks more like each favor is worth one point. And what we ask for is worth a lot more than one point in your eyes, for the most part. Well, how much do you guys give points to what we do? Equal basis. So it's a couple. So who cares? Why don't you just... Why can't it just be your your hundred points yeah, is equal to our one point? Still, ratio wise, it would still come out to the same. It's generally basically what I, what I'm trying to say is it takes guys longer to earn points in a woman's eyes than it does for a woman to earn points in a man's eyes. A guy is more willing to do things for a woman and do more things. For a woman, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, there's other opinions, I'm sure, but I'm also, I'm not talking about shit guys. I'm talking about actual... I think even good guys, that's very subjective. Like, because there may be things that a girl is doing that the guys don't recognize. Just like there's things a guy can do that a girl is not recognized. It's all about value. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And that's also another place that kind of skews the scoring system. Because I might be doing something that I think is like, wow, this is wonderful. This has got to be worth all kinds of crap. And to you, it's like, damn it, you're doing that again? Yeah, so basically that might be why a guy stops doing things for you is because he doesn't recognize the stuff you're doing and you haven't given him enough of what's in his personal bank for points that he's looking for. Or you're not recognizing what he's doing. Yeah. So he gave up. Which means, are you guys really aligned and are you paying attention to that? Yeah. that usually I would think would happen when you're trying to make... It, it comes down to... Something work that's not... Being able to have a discussion. It's about communication... 
like you have to be able to communicate uh, your wants, needs, and all of that kind of thing to your partner. This, this is honestly, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name. Uh, it, it, I just saw him on YouTube not long ago. It's a gay guy that gives love advice for straight couples. And he's talking about the openness within uh, a gay couple's relationship. It's like, after you tell your mom that, what do you have to hide from any partner? Well, straight couples generally don't have that kind of communication. What, like open or whatever? Yeah, it's thing. Things are hidden behind games. It's it's that open communication that can actually make a relationship healthier. Hey, you better quit all that scratching the carpet. Stop. All right. Um, I think we'll wrap that up here. I don't really know about communicate. Yeah. Um... <laughs> That's mostly for the guys. Guys and girls. It is, but most girls... I mean, that doesn't mean because a girl true. communicates that she knows how to communicate either. And there's also nonverbal communication, just like there's verbal communication. There's also the love language. you got to communicate So that's a big thing, too. But it's also knowing, you know, how to be respectful, how you really feel, how to control your emotions, how to respond and not re react. You know, all of that. But, um... It's also about respecting what each other wants to communicate about. There's things that women want to communicate that men will just shut down. And there are things we're not comfortable talking about. Yeah, we, you need to work on it. There are things y'all aren't comfortable talking about. Uh, not really. I mean, I'm comfortable talking about stuff. It, if you're talking about vulnerable stuff versus things that are like video games or something. I mean, what are we talking about here? Are we talking know. about like relationship communication or like... I don't know, but my time is pretty yeah. much up. All right. So um, we will do another one of these soon. This was just like a last minute thing. Yeah. You can kind of tell by the way we look or whatever, but the way you look. The way you look. <laughs> I look amazing. But I love you guys. <laughs> I will be posting more videos soon. Um, I just kind of needed a little bit of me time and introspective time and all of that and just figuring things out um, on a shift for myself. But I love you. If you have any questions or any ideas or comments, um, let us know. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I put out different types of videos. Um, if you're looking to either for emails, any of our services, um, donations, anything like that. All the information will be in the description box below. My email address, my PayPal information, um, all of that. But at the very least, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and give us some suggestions bell. for what you want to hear us talk about. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll try to keep putting these out at least once yeah. a week for you guys. Um, so we've just been really trying to figure a lot of things out and everything. But is that it? I feel like I'm forgetting some. But it's kind of amazing. off. Um, all right. I love you guys. I hope everything's going well. Merry Christmas. That's coming up. Happy New Year. Y'all have a good night. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>